Hello everyone, good evening. Tonight the winner of the International Booker Prize is going to be announced and it's an online ceremony so I've set up my laptop ready to, to watch it online. Uh, it's being announced on YouTube on the, the Booker Prize channels and uh, I thought I would dress up for the occasion uh, as I did last year. Although this year I haven't cheated, I'm not wearing pajama bottoms or Hawaiian shorts on, on my bottom. I am actually wearing trousers uh, so, uh, so there's some improvement uh, this year. And uh, yeah, one of these six books is going to be announced as this year's winner. And I have read all six books now. And I'm not going to go through each book comprehensively uh, before the announcement is made. It's only uh, six or so minutes away because uh, it's one of the perils of following a book prize and, and the, the progress of a book prize is that you end up talking about the same books over and over again. So I've discussed all of these books um, most recently in Memory of Memory and when we cease to understand the world. Um, I talked about them in my monthly wrap-up video yesterday and I have written reviews of each of the books um, so I'll put links to those below in the, the description uh, if you want to know more of my thoughts about these books because if you've already heard me talk about them I don't want to bore you uh, with the, the details about them um, but equally I know this might be the first time you're coming to hear me talk about this prize and so want to know more what I think about these books so yeah I'll put links below to, to all of that but overall I have to say like looking at these six books together I think it's particularly noteworthy how they all look at different senses of our personal and collective history and they have innovative ways of approaching that how you memorialize that experience in fact or fiction and a lot of these books are sort of blending those two genres so I think that's really interesting and something that makes this one of the most innovative uh, book prizes that is out there like the consistently the books they select for it have these sort of innovative qual qualities to them and uh, so I really appreciate that and I've enjoyed reading these um, books so much although I've <laughs> appreciated some less than others and uh, so I'm gonna do my ranking of them before uh, the announcement is made only five minutes away now and uh, because you know last year I was very disappointed with uh, the winner the discomfort of evening it was my least favorite book out of all of the fascinating and wonderful books that were on the long list last year. I'll, although there were aspects of it I did appreciate and uh, I think it's really exciting that this young author won and uh, and they're gonna have a new book out soon and so yeah that's that's really exciting and great but uh, but yeah it wasn't my favorite book and I expressed my disappointment about that in a video last year and I uh, also have to say that I one of my favorite books that I read last year Minor Detail which was on this year's long list didn't make it to this year's shortlist and so I'd really highlight this book as a, you know really outstanding and uh, one that definitely fits in with the themes of uh, these these other books um, so looking at the, the books as a whole I would say uh, my least favorite and you've heard me talk about this book before is The War of the Poor by Eric Villard so that would go on the bottom uh, next I would put uh, the short story collection The Dangers of Smoking in Bed by Mariana Enriquez. Um, th th I thought these were interesting stories but yeah a bit gimmicky and uh, and yeah just didn't quite work for me at least all of them um some of them I thought were really moving and effective but uh, but yeah that's my feeling about that and uh, next I would probably put in memory of memory um though it's really tricky uh or maybe not i don't know it's um this 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 book is a lot it's a lot to get through and so fascinating but uh but yeah there it, it, some parts of it are a bit of a slog so it would go fourth on my list 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 i haven't even started drinking and i'm already starting to slur um so next i would put when we cease to understand the world by benjamin labatut uh, absolutely fascinating book so beautifully written and just like flows wonderfully uh next on the list i uh, i it's so tricky to to pick i would i would be really happy if either the employees or at night all blood is black wins um yeah really happy for either of these to win but if i was a judge and i was forced to choose i I would pick the employees um, second uh, that that would probably go second on my list I mean even though it says 
so much about our history and the ways we perceive history, even though it's a future set novel that's it's a science fiction novel set in outer space. It it still like speaks to those themes that like carry through these books. And maybe that's just me reading into it, but uh, but I do think it is there. And yeah, my absolute favorite is At Night All Blood is Black by David Diop, which I just think is an incredible novel about war and humanity and what makes us human. And uh, and yeah, is one of the most incredible novels I I've read in recent times. So I am hoping that this will win. We will see. But as you know, last year, I, I am uh, really prepared to be disappointed. And I, I, I don't really mind so much like what actually wins, because it doesn't matter too much to me personally. But but I, I do hope at night, All Blood is Back um, will be the, the winner, because yeah, it's absolutely the standout book for me. And I would highly recommend that you read it if you haven't read it already. But now I've gone through all of that. And there's only a minute and 20 seconds to go before the ceremony starts. Uh, so I'm going to crack open a can of rosé with bubbles because <laughs> I am so classy. It seems to be a trend recently of having wine and cocktails in cans. And I feel like this is the sort of like ironic thing people are doing at the moment. But eventually it's just going to be come the reality and we're all just going to, instead of getting wine in bottles, it's all going to come in cans. Uh, so here we go. And I've got a special glass for it. Here we go. Celebration time. Yay, book prizes. <laughs> I'm also going to interact and say where I'm writing from. Oh, I'm in all caps. That's not good. I don't want to be shouting at the people um, who are watching. At night, all blood is black. OK, here we go. Uh, it's almost, ah, it, it is 6 o'clock. So it's surely going to start any time now. But I'm going to start drinking. Send us up. Okay, put it full screen. Woo -woo. Ceremony will begin shortly, but I'm here now. Hello everyone, I'm Colleen Harris, BBC News journalist, presenter and proud Coventry resident. Welcome to the 2021 International Booker Prize winner announcement. Uh, it feels like she's looking right at me. From the magnificent <laughs> cathedral in Coventry. I've never been to Coventry. Coventry won its status as UK City of Culture on the strength of its diversity and youthfulness and will demonstrate that culture is a force that changes lives. Maybe I'll visit sometime. As well as sometime. providing a stunning backdrop, the cathedral is known <laughs> worldwide as a symbol of peace and reconciliation encouraging us to respond to brokenness by entering other people's worlds, just as the books recognised by the International Booker Prize encourage us to step into others' shoes. Oh, that's lovely. The book. International Booker Prize is awarded every year for a single book translated into English and published in the UK or Ireland. The vital work of translators is celebrated with the £50,000 prize money divided equally between the author and translator. That is such a cool the thing about the prize, isn't it? The author and translator also receives £1,000. This evening, Fiametta Rocco, the administrator of the prize, will tell you uh, more Fiametta. about it and you'll hear about all six of the shortlisted books which will be showcased by short videos throughout the programme. Yeah. We've got a guest appearance so from our 2020 winners, Marique Lucas and Michelle Hutchinson, who will be talking to the director of the Booker Prize Foundation, Gabby Wood. Finally, this year's chair of judges, Lucy Hughes Hallett, will be joining us to make the all important announcement of the 2021 Ooh. winning book. When's it gonna happen? I'm delighted to now introduce Fiametta Rocco. Yay. Thank you, Colleen. Hello and welcome. I'm standing in Coventry Cathedral in front of John Piper's famous stained glass window. Wow. It was commissioned just after the Second World That's War. That's beautiful. To symbolize the warmth and empathy. It's a rainbow. It it's like Pride Month. It is the best of our common <laughs> humanity. The International Booker Prize has that very same spirit. It's open to any work of fiction written in any language and published over the previous year in English, in Britain and Ireland. And the prize of £50,000 for the winner mm. is shared equally between author and translator. The two Booker Prizes are unusual among literary awards. All the judges read all the books. That There's is a no lot triage, of reading. No dividing up the work to lighten the load. Every book is given the same attention. Wow. For the past year... I think there was like 120 submissions or something? have been on a journey of discovery. 
They've read 123 books. 123? Translated from dozens wow. of languages. The That's discussions a huge they've amount. had, sometimes heated, always illuminating. Ooh, I wish I could have listened to some of those process. conversations. Wouldn't that Perhaps be amazing? even the key part in this seemingly amorphous task of choosing the best book of 2021. I know a wonderful thing. I just saw, I just found in the pocket of this jacket, I guess I last wore this when I went to the Women's Prize um, celebrations back in 2018. And so here's my tickets to go to, uh, to go to the celebrations for that book prize. So this is obviously my book prize jacket. <laughs> translation is at the heart of this book, not only in the story, because there's, um, there's translation happening. There are characters whose job it is to interpret between the soldiers who do and don't speak French, and it's part of the sort of underlying um, situation, condition of the narrative as Stubby chose to tell it because the narrator is um, not a French speaker and yet the narrative is, is written in French. Hmm. I've not heard the author speak about this before, so it's great to I see this. Watching as my dignity is chased away by shame. But I refused. Uh, I refused. Uh, it is such a harrowing novel, but so moving. Wow. Uh, I love her hair and glasses. It's a very frivolous thing to say, but. My history, my surroundings, my place. And for that, I needed to to make it a character. The more local you go, the more you know your place and the more you share your place with other people, the m more universal the literature. I didn't hesitate. I put the gloves on and grabbed her little neck and squeezed. It's not exactly practical to try to strangle a dead person. But a girl can't be desperate and reasonable at the same time. Uh, they are stories that give you the spooky ooky factor. Last year, the discomfort of evening was crowned the winning book in the first fully virtual winner announcement. Let's hear from author Marie Lucas Reinveld and translator Michelle Hutchison. I love their shirt. For the same for me, it's been a, a real confidence booster to win the prize. I, I'd particularly like to congratulate all the translators on, on the shortlist and, and tell oh. them to hang on in there with their translation careers and yeah, yeah, yeah. a um, fantastic um, mark of recognition for the great work that they're doing. Because I remember you said when you won last year, you said you felt as happy as a cow with seven udders. Um, <laughs> I love that expression. And I what would you say to people who still consider fiction in translation to be somewhat niche? I would I would say give fiction in translation a try because um, how do you know it's niche until, until you've read some? Very good um, point. And, it, and, and a book in translation is just the same as a book in English. What's the difference? You know, the, the, yeah, you might have different flavours, but the whole range of types of books is, is there in other countries as well, of course. Yeah. It is still a very Next cool cover, list, isn't it? We have where we ceased <laughs> Time for a top up. Nathan West. Another part, The Employees by Olga Rahn, translated from Danish Olga by Ron. Martin Aitken, published Not by Lolly Editions. When we cease to understand the world, it's, it's a book about the limits of thought. It's about those ideas that defy understanding and that take us beyond ourselves. I use a somewhat strange mixture of fact and fiction, but the book deals with a lot of ideas that, that go beyond the, the purview of science. And for those, stranger, wilder aspects of the human experience, I had to use the mechanisms of fiction. I think it's resonated with people because right now uh, we all feel that we're not understanding the world. This is one of the favorites to win, I think. I've heard so many people cheering for it. Ooh, now we're going to hear about Robin. Robin? Is that for it? quite some Ron? time, I was interested to write something that was not about the individual or the individual voice. I thought that it could be an exciting thing to try to work with the group. I think a lot of our literature is about an individual sensing or experiencing the world. I'm a little afraid that uh, the hardcore science fiction fans would say it's not, that it's too <laughs> literary. But I love science fiction and I think it's important to embrace all kinds of genres. Even more profoundly to us, uh, 
now in our present predicament, I think, when we're, we're all at home, we're isolated with our work, and we're cut off in, 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 in the dark and, and empty space of, of, of the pandemic. That's a really good point. I think it would be so interesting to reread this because you get so many of these quiet, moving moments in it, individual voices. War of the Poor by Eric Briard, translated from French by Marc Polizotti, <laughs> published by Pan Macmillan, Picador. Ooh, which section are they going to pick? This. I've been writing this book since I was 10 years old, and I still <laughs> have incredible. that this uh, school notebook from the Soviet 1980s. I don't exactly know <laughs> how it all had started. There was no starting point. It was an ongoing story. It was my favorite thing, uh, going over together with my mom, photo albums over the stories. So mm. I always had this feeling that at some time I should be writing this thing, whatever it will be. Uh, gosh. It has inspired me to look more into my own family history. I went back to bed and slept for the rest of the day. Strange, can't think how I could have slept so long. Didn't get up till evening, till 8pm. Drank some milk. Closed the curtains and lay down. And again, this sleep to transport me away from reality. Sleep is my salvation. Gosh, I'm having to like suppress burps because I'm drinking bubbly <laughs> during this like moving and profound reading by the great Fiona Shaw. <laughs> Et alors elle émerge de la foule, sort du chaos, un homme, un jeune théologien, Thomas Munzer, qui va se ranger résolument du côté du peuple et affronter les princes. Et il va jouer sa vie. One of the things that I really admire about uh, Eric's work is the clarity of it. Uh, this book is extremely short. It's very economical. Uh, my first literary engagement Too was short. a poet, so I greatly appreciate economy of language. And I appreciate the fact that this tells a very rich story in very few words. There's not a single wasted word in this book. That doesn't give you enough. Ah, this is going to win, isn't it? I'm, I'm prepared to be so, so disappointed. Oh it's such a fascinating subject and story, but it doesn't give you enough. It doesn't go into enough depth in the, and the subjects. It just, uh, I, I feel like that's too much of a cheat. This year's chair of judges to announce the winners of the 2021 International Book Okay, here we go. All six books. Which is it going to be? I'm, I'm prepared to be disappointed, but uh, I'm hoping... If we are to fully engage with people from non-English speaking cultures, we must be able to enter their imaginations. You can only learn a certain amount from sightseeing, from studying another country's economics, its mineral resources, or even its political history. Taking a preparatory Music, drink. cinema, and the visual arts take you a bit further, mm. but it's fiction, above all, that allows us to know the inside of other people's minds. To know and to enjoy. It's been a delight to read the 125 books that were submitted for wow. this prize. I thought it was 123. So 125 months, or 23? We judges have scarcely mm. left our homes and yet we have been traveling the world. <laughs> I want to thank my colleagues for their diligence, their brilliantly perceptive comments and above all for their good humour. <laughs> we have had our disagreements, Ooh. but no crosswords. Just the huge really? pleasure really? of sharing our enthusiasm <laughs> for writing and for reading. So thank you to Ida Edamariam, Neil Mukherjee, Neil. Olivette Otelli, George Surtees. All of them are authors, as I am, and the conversations we have had mm. have been greatly enriched by their insider understanding of how writing works. George Surtees is also a translator who won this prize in 2015. Oh yeah! One of his many translations from his native Hungarian. This prize is unique in rewarding translators equally with authors. Mm. Translation is the most modest and self-effacing of literary arts. The very best translators make themselves invisible, but they are essential. Here is what a great 17th century translator said. It is translation 
that openeth the window to let in the light, that mm. breaketh the nutshell that we may eat the kernel, that removeth the cover of the well that we may come by the water. I wish I had some nuts now to snack on. Six <laughs> wonderful books, <laughs> so beautifully silly. written, full of original thought and compelling stories, but only one can win. Mm. The protagonist of this novel is accused of sorcery. We agreed that its incantatory prose and dark, brilliant vision had jangled our emotions and blown our minds. <gasps> that has cast a spell on us. Success. The winner of the 2021 International Booker Prize is At Night, <laughs> All is Black. Oh. Written by David Diop. Hey, hey. <laughs> oh, wow. Je suis vraiment extrêmement heureux d'avoir gagné un International Booker Prize et mes premières pensées vont à Anna Moskovakis oh. sans laquelle ce prix n'aurait pas été gagné par nous deux Yay. parce que c'est une grande écrivaine et une grande artiste euh, elle également et euh, je voulais aussi oh, I'm getting really emotional this is like oh, so great de Pushkin Press ainsi que toute l'équipe de Pushkin Press pour le soutien à l'effectif euh, à mm. mon livre qui a permis aujourd'hui cette euh, magnifique distinction je voudrais remercier aussi mon agent littéraire Magali Delobel qui a permis cette rencontre entre Living an awakened dream. De, de rêve, <laughs> Merci à toutes et tous. Oh, very well said. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> it's a thrill to be in the company of these writers and translators. Um, they're wild and brilliant books and, and so many small and independent presses. Oh. Thank you to the jury, the booker, to Jeremy Davies, to FSG and Pushkin Press, um, to my family who taught me that language and culture occur in the plural, and such thanks to David Diop for entrusting me with this incredible work. The writer and translator John Keane asks us, what does it mean to live with and not to dominate? What does it mean to be together without being the same, to fully accept the idea of difference and all its difficulty and pain and complexity, and to be in a continuous conversation about that? And I'm just so grateful to translation and to my fellow translators and to those who read and publish translations for keeping me in this conversation. Thank you so much. Oh, Wonderful. That's beautifully Thank said. Thank you, Lucy, and huge Yay! congratulations to the ah, have a drink. David Diop and Anna Moskovakis for At Night All Blood is Black. Yay, David. It's goodbye Yay! on commentary for now. The Booker <laughs> Prize Foundation is looking Honestly, forward to so spending brilliant. more time in the UK City of Culture in the coming months. Honestly, ah, oh, it's it's such a brilliant book. I mean, it's brutal. It's it's difficult subject matter, like talking about the real brutality and gruesomeness of, of war and the madness of war, but also yeah, about this man searching for what it means to be human amidst the chaos of, of war. And it does that in such a profound and moving way. And so I, I just think this is such an incredible book. I, I, I'm i looking forward to rereading it again at some point. I'm looking forward to having more conversations with people who have read it for the first time and, uh, and yeah, having more discussions about it. Honestly, such a brilliant book. What a great result. Finally, my favorite, my favorite wins this prize. And uh, I'm just so happy about that so I'm gonna go have another drink thank you for following me on this journey uh, if you've watched more of my videos about talking about the International Booker Prize and it is not long now until we're gonna get the main Booker Prize I think the uh, long list for that is gonna be announced sometime is it in July or so I don't know I need to check the dates but uh, but yeah um, what a great uh, group of books we can uh, yeah continue to like honestly like in memory of memory and when we cease to understand the world it's really like shifted the way how I think about 
about some of these subjects and so I'm so grateful for that and like I'm still like churning them over in my mind uh, but yeah the employees and that night all blood is black are such an amazing novels and works of fiction in themselves and what they say about our world in the past and what are about our world in the future and uh, yeah it's just uh, incredible and like oh another video is going to start next talking about the discomfort of evening so I'm going to end off here um, thank you for watching along with me and following this journey and cheers I hope you had a drink with you <laughs> I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.